Raider Nation, what's going on? This is the Raiders Report. My name is Mitchell Renz. Please follow me on Twitter at MitchellRenz365. Guys, I got a little bit of breaking news for you coming out of Oakland. And, well, I'm not totally surprised. The Raiders have cut Christian Hackenberg. He was traded to the Raiders on May 22nd in exchange for a conditional seventh-round pick in the 2019 NFL Draft. Why is it important that the Raiders cut him? Well, first, the Raiders get back their seventh-round pick. And second, I've been right all along in saying that Christian Hackenberg is hashtag bad. If Gruden can't fix Hackenberg, I'm guessing nobody can. Guys, real quick then, we're going to bring up right now the Raiders depth chart at quarterback. So Derek Carr, Connor Cook, EJ Manuel. This is going to be a competition, I would imagine, between these uh, two guys behind Derek Carr. It's going to be between Cook and Manuel fighting for that second spot. Now let's get into some Raiders news. The Raiders signed defensive tackle Atba Rubin, a veteran added to the defense. Haven't said that all offseason. The Oakland Raiders added this veteran to bolster the defense. Rubin signed a free agent deal he announced Monday on Twitter. The 6'2", 300-pound Rubin entered the league in 2008 as a six-round pick with the Cleveland Browns. He would provide depth to the Raiders' defensive line. He previously spent seven seasons in Cleveland, two seasons with the Seahawks, and played two games for the Denver Broncos and 10 with the Atlanta Falcons in 2017. In his career, the 31-year-old has appeared in 143 games with 107 starts. All that Reuben talk really makes me want a Reuben sandwich. Hopefully I didn't butcher that joke too bad. Let's get into the next bit of news I got for you guys. Raiders signed defensive lineman Frosty Rucker, another veteran that we added. The Raiders signed Cardinals defensive lineman Frosty Rucker to a one-year deal. Rucker played six seasons in Cincinnati and one in Cleveland. He had five years in Arizona, and he had 176 tackles, 21 and a half sacks in his career. Although Rucker started 38 games over his five years in Arizona, he'll likely only be a backup option for Oakland. And now if you guys see right here, he's got his last three years. I mean, in 2017, he started 16 games. 2016, though, he only started one. And then 2015, you know, the 13 games there. But as you can see, in 2017, maybe if we can get a guy who can just add a little bit of depth to this defensive line, I like that a lot. Now... I got kind of a funny uh, reaction pull for you. I know Frosty's not spelled the same, but I feel like there's two people in this world, and you're either a chocolate or a vanilla guy. So what kind of Frosty would you order if you had to get one? For me personally, I'm a chocolate guy, so if you agree with me, throw up that heart. If you're a vanilla guy like Jeff Fisher, uh, throw me a like there. Next one I got for you guys, next bit of news. Oakland hosting the Detroit Lions for joint practices. So... This is, uh, I'm, I'm going to make a joke here, and I hope you guys don't take it the wrong way, but Martavis, he's probably going to be leading these joint practices, and yeah, I'm sorry, guys. I just had to throw that one in there, but I'll, all aside from Martavis, he's doing the right things. I don't want to crash his name too much. The Raiders will host the Detroit Lions for two joint practice sessions as part of the team's 2018 training camp schedule, the team announced on Friday. The Raiders and Lions will practice on Tuesday, August 7th, and Wednesday, August 8th as the Silver and Blacks training camp home in Napa, California. The Raiders will then host the Lions in the preseason opener for both teams at the Oakland Coliseum on Friday, August 10th at 7.30 p.m. The remainder of the Raiders training camp schedule, including specific dates and times, will be announced in the coming weeks. So stay tuned on the Raiders report so you don't miss anything. Raider Nation, thanks so much for tuning in to the Raiders Report. My name is Mitchell Renz. Please follow me on Twitter, at MitchellRenz365. And make sure you guys subscribe to the new Raiders YouTube channel, which you guys can see below at chatsports.com, Raiders TV. Guys, we talk a lot of rumors on this show, so you need to understand my Raiders rumor scale. Zero chucky heads, tuck rule, tuck that, not going to happen. One chucky head equals small shred of truth. I like to think 25% chance of happening. Two chucky heads equals people are talking, 50-50. Three chucky heads equals pretty likely, 75% chance. And then four chucky heads, believe it, baby, 100% this rumor is going to happen. Now, let's get into some of those rumors. Jordy Nelson is impressing Derek Carr. I'm giving this one four chucky heads, believe it, baby. Jordy Nelson hasn't played one game for the Oakland Raiders, and he's already making an impact with his team, and especially Derek Carr. Just ask, well, Derek Carr himself, who is spending a lot of time with his new wide receiver during the offseason. He's This is exactly what Carr had to say. He's very outspoken in meetings. Coaches always say, if you have a question, ask. If you never know if it's a real thing, you don't want to speak up sometimes, but Jordy is speaking up every time. Jordy is very detailed, Carr said. He wants to do everything exactly how you want it done. I see why Aaron Rodgers love throwing him the ball. He knows if you're comfortable, you'll throw it to them. Nelson's experience is apparently rubbing off on new teammates Amari Cooper and Martavis Bryant. When you add guys like Jordy, it trickles down to the entire team. 
Next room I got for you guys coming up on the board, Jeremy Macklin. Is he coming to the Oakland Raiders? Well, I'm giving this one two Chucky heads. People are talking. Personally, I would be surprised if the Raiders added Macklin, but ESPN's Bill Barnwell's recent breakdown of the best remaining NFL free agents, he says he believes that Macklin would land with the Raiders. Barnell writes, at this point, Macklin is realistically best as a slot receiver who can still who can use his experience to create space and throwing lanes. He could fit in with Oakland where the Raiders have spent the offseason stockpiling veterans and could use an upgrade on Seth Roberts. Macklin also has experience in the West Coast offense, so he could be a quick study in Gruden's scheme, end quote. For me, it's an interesting argument for why the Raiders could be a fit for Macklin, and I'm not completely opposed to it. With that said, this team's wide receiver room is already pretty loaded. The top three wideouts currently are Amari Cooper, Jordy Nelson, and Martavis Bryant, while they also have Seth Roberts and the recently acquired Ryan Switzer. But I want to show you guys real quick Jeremy Macklin's last three seasons, and you can see in 2017 and 2016, he only played in 12 games, and sure, he didn't have very good numbers, but when you look at that 2015 year, 87 catches, 1,000 yards, and 8 touchdowns, that's also a year coming off of when Alex Smith didn't throw a touchdown to a single wide receiver. So if we can get to that 15 Macklin, I'd take him in a heartbeat. Let's get into that next rumor. Khalil Mack, hold out. Give him this one four chalky heads. Believe it, baby. So not what I wanted to hear, and to be honest, not really what I really wanted to report. But according to Ian Rappaport, the Raiders are not expecting star defensive end Khalil Mack for mandatory minicamp this week. That makes him an official holdout as he seeks a lucrative contract extension. A strong stance for the player who has averaged 12 sacks over the past three seasons. This is not a shocking revelation because Mack has been sitting out all offseason workouts and practices while awaiting a contract extension. That extension has not arrived, and so neither has Mack. The official fine for missing the entire three-day minicamp is $84,435, which the Raiders can either choose not to levy or put in the contract negotiations. Regardless, this is a situation the Raiders should have taken care of before now, but it's not unusual for them. Both Carr and Gabe Jackson signed their extensions well after mandatory minicamp last offseason. Next rumor I got for you guys coming up on the board, Donald Penn. He is the most overpaid Raider. Find out afterward from our sponsor, Miz and Amaze. I'm giving this one two Chucky heads. People are talking. Chat Sports own Brian Ralph wrote an article, The Four Most Overpaid Raiders Players. Brian starts the article illustrating that 2017 wasn't the year the Raiders were hoping for and got rid of some bad contracts this offseason. The top name on the list is Donald Penn, who will be at 8.4 million cap hit in 2018. This is what Brian said when Penn was number one. It appears that Colt Miller, Oakland's first round pick, may be responsible for protecting quarterback Derek Carr's blindside in 2018 as he's been working out exclusively on the left side of the Raiders' offensive line. What does this mean for Penn? Well, Oakland is looking to trade him as they are on the hook for well over $8 million for a guy they don't want in the starting lineup. That, friends, is an overpay. Ralph also mentions other names like Bruce Irvin, Jordy Nelson, Seth Roberts. But I want to know from you guys, who do you think is the most overpaid Raider right now? Do you think it's Donald Penn? Do you think it's Bruce Irvin? Do you think it's Jordy Nelson? Do you think it's Seth Roberts? You can comment. For you guys on Facebook, give me a heart. If you think it's Penn, a like for Irvin. Wow face for Jordy Nelson or a laughing face for Seth Roberts. Next one I got for you coming at you, Donald Penn. Is he going to be cut? So we just talked about him being overpaid. Well, is he going to be cut? I'm going to give this one one chucky head, small shred of truth. So this is from NFL Spin Zone. During his time with the Oakland Raiders, Donald Penn has done an incredible job protecting quarterback Derek Carr. In fact, only one sack he has allowed, and that was in 2016 and Week 16. In April, the Raiders drafted UCLA left tackle Colt Miller with the 15th overall pick, and Penn was not too happy about it. He actually called John Gruden immediately following the selection, and the conversation, well, <laughs> it was not a friendly one. Penn broke his foot, resulting in a Liz Frank surgery, and has yet to get back to 100%. So, on Sunday, NFL Spin Zone released a list of one veteran per each team who was likely to be cut this summer. Of course, you never want to be in bad terms with Gruden, but the relationship seems to be okay now. Penn told NFL Total Access that Gruden coming to Oakland was like Golden State Warriors getting Steve Kerr. So you can see how much Penn respects the coach. The odds of Penn getting cut are pretty slim at this point. Gruden is building the team to win right away. And while guys like Parker and Miller may be legitimate left tackles in the future, the 28th season is no time for the team to put a rookie to protect 
Carr's blind side. Last rumor I got for you guys coming up on the board. Gunther, is he praising Tank Carradine and Fidel Brown? I'm giving this one four Chucky heads. Believe it, baby. Paul Gunther made sure to give a tip of the cap to both Tank Carradine and Fidel Brown, who made who have received some extra reps with Khalil Mack sitting out while negotiating a new deal. As Matt Scheidman of the Bay Area News Group revealed, Gunther used the word surprise when he was speaking about both pass rushers. Both Carradine and Brown are intriguing names and have taken interesting routes to get to this point with the Raiders. Carradine was a free agent signing by John Gruden and the company this offseason who spent the first five seasons of his NFL career with the San Francisco 49ers. He was originally a second-round pick out of Florida State, but was unable to do much from a statistical standpoint with the Niners. He totaled 75 total tackles with 5.5 sacks in 44 games, and although he did flash upside, he was never able to take that next big step. Now, for Brown, he was one of my sleepers. After being added as a 2017 undrafted free agent out of Ole Miss, there was plenty of interest surrounding him in a solid training camp and preseason. Raider Nation, thank you so much for tuning in to Raiders Report. My name is Mitchell Renz. Please follow me on Twitter at Mitchell Renz 365. And don't forget to subscribe to that new YouTube channel, The Oakland Raiders Report.